And joining us now, live, from the great state of Wisconsin, man who's the reigning, defending, undisputed MVP of the NFL, going back to back in the last two years, owner and founder of the Aaron Rodgers Book Club, which has made the world much smarter and a better place, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. What's up, man? How you doing, pal? We got the whole, the whole crew's in there, huh? We got <laughs> Darius is in there. Deep. It's packed house, man. It is. It's packed out because, you know, we got a shorter week this week because Thanksgiving's on the horizon. And, you know, when you're playing in the league, you don't get to enjoy Thanksgiving as much as everybody else. Uh, now that I'm retired and all the boys are retired, we're going to enjoy the hell out of this week. What do you got this week? What do you got cooking? Are we just all ball till Sunday? Is that all we're doing? Are we thinking about Thanksgiving at all, Aaron Rodgers? Oh, we love Thanksgiving. Definitely one of my favorite celebrated holidays uh so yeah i mean i'm not sure what the schedule is uh, finalized but you know the nfl very rarely you get uh, holidays off so I'm, I'm guessing we're probably working maybe a little earlier day and i'm not hosting this year so i got uh, a lot of freedom man it's great oh, good for you i hope you enjoy the hell out of your holiday go ahead aj yeah why aren't you hosting this year you didn't want to <laughs> what happened i what happened we got, we're after COVID, COVID and everything. Now's the year. COVID. COVID, yeah. <laughs> Are you just looking out? Are you just looking out for everybody? They're everybody be vaxxed if they come to the house? Yeah, I got steamrolled, I think. Uh, there's, there's never really been too many competing uh, parties. Oh, no. But this year, the Crosbys, you know, those kickers, they rose up and said, not this year. Nice. This year is ours. And so... I was assuming, you know, the Bakhtiaris and the Cobbs, we'd kind of uh, triple host this thing at my house, uh, you know, gladly, like I've done in the past. But the Crosbys kind of jumped in there and bogarted all of our guest lists. Oh, wow. no. So it's at the Crosby this year. All right. Well, I'm sure you're Fine excited. by me. I'm not the host. <laughs> That's great. That means I can... Uh, French or Irish exit, depending on what you uh, what you prefer, whenever I want. Well, I am a rather Irish person, and I wouldn't mind just leaving without saying goodbye to people. So I think it's a compliment uh, for both parties there. I think you're going to enjoy it more. When you don't have to host, you don't have to worry about any of the bullshit. I'm excited to see what the Crosby's put together. They're going to be – it's going to be a good gathering, right? I assume this is going to be a solid Thanksgiving gathering for the Green Bay Packers. Good spread. We're expecting a good spread from the Crosby's? It better be. It better be. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm going to be in there judging the hell out of all of it. Yeah. The decorations, the food presentation, the food options, the dessert options. Uh, I'm going to try really hard to, to uh, get into my ayahuasca mindset and not judge <laughs> you know, every little thing. But how can you not? I mean, the first and most important thing and most fun thing to judge is the turkey, right? Oh, yeah. Because yes. it's literally, as anybody knows who's cooking turkey, it is the most nerve-wracking thing mm -hmm. of all time if you're to hosting. get that thing right. Because in general, how many people actually go to Thanksgiving to eat the turkey? Not many, I would say. Most of the time, it's the sides, right? It's Damn. some sort of. I love yeah. the turkey. I'm gonna eat the bre I'm gonna eat the drumstick, okay? Because I'm a male and uh, I worked hard but for this do turkey. Eat, do you eat the turkey dry? Or do you put some gravy on it? Never. I'm dark meat guy on the turkey for sure. The the people that drink or eat the dry meat, whatever that is, I guess what? the white no, no, meat. No, you put the you put the gravy on there though. Uh, no, come on, cuz. I don't need to play those games. Gravy's for the mashed potatoes because mashed potatoes have terrible taste and they need a good flavor. Whoa. So you put gravy on mashed potatoes. Personally, that's what I do. And give me the juicy meat as opposed to the <coughs> meat. I don't know what the deal. I don't know. I don't know how anybody does it. But you're right. Cooking it is a lot of pressure because you got you got what I just said happening. Yeah. You got literally what I just said happening. You cooked the turkey in the past? And how long do you think the Crosby's I, have been banking on hosting it and you just keep doing it every year and they're like, this motherfucker, like we're going to get this at some point. We would like to do this. Has this been something brewing for a while, you think? It might have been, yeah. I mean, they were, they were sometimes uh, attendees, always invited, always invited. And, you know, they weren't 100% uh, uh, oh, no. RSVPers, oh, you know. So that maybe that was... Part of it, maybe you know, maybe I should do the same to them. Say, yeah, I'm coming. I texted Mason earlier. I'm coming, and then maybe no show. Whoa. Oh. Packers don't need that right now, okay? Need to have a good Thanksgiving. <laughs> Let's talk about that, though. Big game Sunday Night Football, Philadelphia Eagles. What are you – everything's still in front of you. Mathematically, can still can control your destiny. What do you think you take away from last Thursday? Maybe some time away from the facility. A second kind of mini bye week is what people call Thursday night football. What is your mindset, and what did you learn this past weekend while watching the other games, if you did as such? 
I didn't watch anything this weekend. Sweet. Uh, so I can't tell you about that. I mean, I looked at the scores, but I didn't watch any of the games. Uh, I was following what Philly was doing in, in Indy. Indy gave him a good run at him down 10 in the fourth quarter. Um, so, I mean, the last couple of games, uh, obviously they won the first eight and, and looked real dominant. And then uh, Washington put up a good fight uh, to give them their first loss. And then obviously Indy gave him a good fight um, uh, as well. So, you know, it's the NFL. Anybody, anybody can beat anybody any week. And there's always uh, upsets uh, that the experts are picking other teams and end up uh, – not winning. So, you know, I don't think we go in thinking we got no chance. Uh, I think we go in with the uh, confidence and the urgency necessary for a team that's in our position that knows we got to string some wins together to get back in this thing. Um, you know, it's prime time Sunday Night Football. We've always uh, put some pretty good performances uh, forward on those. And uh, we're going to be expecting the same when we go to Philly. Hell yeah. Go ahead, what do you think of Darius Slay out there at corner? The guy is playing at a very high level. I'm sure you've seen him. He played against him, obviously, many times. What does he do, you think, that kind of separates him? He seems to be very, very smart and read route combinations. It seems to see what's coming. Well, there's never been a drop-off with him. You know, we've played him a number of times over the years. There's never been any year you feel great about, you know, I'm going to go after 23. That just doesn't happen. I mean, he's one of the elite corners in the league. And um, when you're playing defense that has good pass rush and you can have vision to the football the entire time, you're going to necessarily, more times than not, you're going to have uh, opportunities to football uh, and then when you combine that with excellent ball skills that, Dar- that, that Darius has um, you're gonna you know probably fall into some picks and and then uh, you know when you have the ability to read routes like he does and get in out of his break you know you're gonna be obviously around the football a lot more so I think it's you know in in Detroit for a long time without you know maybe the consistency over the years of that pass rush and also playing in Detroit where you know, they didn't uh, win a lot of games. He might not have got the recognition that he deserved. Uh, I mean, I think people that know football uh, always considered him an elite corner. But now being on a really good football team, obviously that go, what goes with that is the recognition that's often due for some of these guys who have been elite players for a long time but maybe not gotten the attention that they probably deserve. And let's stay on that defensive side of the ball. Signings of last week, Linval Joseph and Indomitian Sue both made an impact against the Indianapolis Colts. Joseph is one of the biggest fucking humans I've ever seen in my life. Whenever he lined up in a jersey 74, I'm like, who is that? What, what, what is that? Who is that? And then, then Sue came in later. They're like, signed on Thursday, playing on Sunday. Not just playing, by the way. We're talking about really doing it. We know you have a solid history, is how we'll call it, within Dominic and Sue. How much have you looked into their defense? How much have you looked into the preparation of Sunday? Does that start on, like, Friday? Or are you going to a normal week here? How much do you know about the D, and what are your thoughts on it, other than just Slay, who is an incredible playmaker? I know plenty about the D, and obviously watched the film. Um, they didn't just sign those two guys. They went out and got Robert Quinn before the deadline as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pat from Chicago. Um, and then, you know, Fletch has been there forever and still is a, you know, great defender off the edge. But adding, you know, some size in the middle like that, definitely not going to hurt. Played against Linville a number of times over the years when he was in Minnesota. He's a space eater, man. He's, he's just swallows up double teams and probably a linebacker's best friend, you know, when you got a guy that wide who can also move. I mean, he's... He has the uh, agility that reminds me of uh, Pat Williams back in the day, for guys that know who that is, you know, just such a huge body who could also, you know, very difficult to cut off when he's backside shade and just such a, uh, you know, mountain of a man. He's just going to demand, you you know, if you run at him, you got to double team him and then he can swallow up those blocks a lot of times. So solid player. Obviously, Sue's been a, a great player for a long time in the league and, him and I have our own stuff, and uh, I think a lot of that's water on the bridge. But uh, of course, it, it goes to show with when you bring in veteran players who are pros, pros, they're going to be ready to play. So you sign a guy on a Thursday, play him on Sunday. That, that seems like such an amazing deal. Not really. If you're a pros, pro, and and if those guys have been you know hoping to get signed throughout the season, obviously they're working out. Obviously they're ready to go. And and you know I think in a system like that, there's probably uh, some plug and play that can happen. You know, it's D line. There's, you know, there's obviously techniques and different pressures and things that you want to bring, but probably for veteran guys like that, stepping in, it was not, uh, not that big of a deal. Yeah. Well, it, it appeared everything you're saying is right. They looked very comfortable, very quickly yeah. in that particular game against a good offensive line in the Indianapolis Colts. Allegedly they looked dominant. I can't wait to see you try to play against that defense because obviously the way you play football is fantastic. Is your thumb a problem? 
Is this a problem? Because you, you, listen, hey, Aaron, hey, hey, you hear me? <laughs> Aaron, you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I've watched you play football a long time, dude, all right? The thing that I absolutely love about it is you have this natural ability, it seems like, to put a football wherever the fuck you want it. Like, literally, we, I can put this football wherever I want this ball to go. It is why people have talked about you being the greatest football talent in the history of football because the way you throw a football. Then after the game, I hear you say, for the first time ever, threw a couple wobblers, threw a couple misses. That ain't you. That ain't Aaron, since I assume since the day you were born. I saw you throw a Bud Light 70 yards to a guy on a fucking jet ski. Wow. Boom, pinpoint accuracy. What The wobblers and maybe throwing off a little bit, was it a mental thing? Is your thumb really? messed up and is it just a night that you've never had before so maybe I'm overreacting and how do you think you bounce back after that whole thing well there was some wind as well I mean I wasn't talking necessarily about the throws I mean you know if you don't throw a perfect spiral in the Green Bay wind you know there's going to be a couple wobblers so um, you know the expectation of a perfect spiral is kind of I mean, what I've been known for and what I expect and if, if there's anything less than that then you know obviously there was something uh, that uh, they contributed to that. I, you know, my thumb is, is what it is. You know, it's been it's been an issue since the Giants, but not an issue that I'm going to rely on for an excuse or need. I mean, after the Cowboys game, I put basically every ball exactly where I wanted to, and there wasn't any questions about how my thumb was. I miss, you know, missed two throws. I probably hit, you know, 99 out of 100, and, and people are wondering what's going on. It's, nothing's changed week to week. It wasn't like it got better one week and then got worse the other week. You know, it goes through things each week. It gets hit various plays and and uh i mean even the dallas game I, when i fumbled i got hit right on the thumb you know and that, and, that, and that bothered me but still was able to make some throws i got hit you know a few times in the game and you know just just depends on, on uh, a lot of other factors but it's not an excuse i'm not going to use it as an excuse it is what it is i suit up every week and expect to play well they're saying it was broken or something like that are you going to end up using a glove will you ever end up having to go to a glove or, yeah. or is that something yeah. you would never ever do <laughs> no i'm not a glove guy well, you know, are you a broken thumb quarterback guy too? Have you ever had to do this before? Has this been something you've ever had to do before? I mean, I've broken other fingers in the past. I played a you know a season, a stretch in college with my index finger, my throwing hand broken. I broke my pinky on, on both hands at various times. Uh, cracked you know wrist, uh, non-throwing. You know, it's which makes certain things painful, getting snaps or whatever. But. You know, if I still feel I can go out there and throw it the way I want to throw it, then obviously I'm going to keep playing. Okay. All right, so I, I, I overreacted. That's good news. That's Better great enough. to hear. That's great Better to enough. know. Ty, your question for Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, Pat mentioned how, you know, you guys still have everything in front of you, and I think a lot of us thought after the Cowboys win that was kind of the galvanizing thing that was going to push everyone forward. And then Tennessee, it is what it is, but you have an, obviously another good opportunity with how good the Eagles are on Sunday. And I know it's a different team and different situation and everything, but do you see any similarities with this team to the 2010 team where you guys won the Super Bowl and you kind of, you know, you had to win in week 17 to, to get into the playoffs? Or do you not think of things in that way? I mean, I wouldn't say the 2010 team. That, that kind of, that's got such a special place in my heart and that kind of always stays kind of in its own lane. The, the way that the team came together that year, it was just something that we, you know, in, in 18 years, you have maybe two or three times. Um, and that was a really, really special group of guys and added some veterans at various points like a Howard Green and a Matt Wilhelm that, you know, played some big roles for us. Uh, Matt on teams and Howard, you know, had one of the biggest plays in the Super Bowl, hitting Ben's arm on a pick six and Nick Collins. And, but more than that, they were glue guys, you know, the guys that came in and, and kept everything together and brought guys uh, together in in a special way, and that's why we were able to make that run. This team reminds me more of the if they're, if you're going to make comparisons, is more of the 16 team that was, you know, inconsistent the first 10 weeks, played a lot of up and down football, and then things kind of came together uh, in Philly on a Monday night, and we started a run uh, and won you know eight in a row and got to the NFC Championship and. And people remember that. They don't remember kind of the struggles that we had getting blown out by Tennessee uh, at Tennessee that year, losing the, you know, at four and five. We played in the Sunday night game against uh, Washington and got, uh, you know, got the offense rolling, but we got beat by a couple scores. And, and then came back in Philly and, and kind of put it all together uh, for a night. And then that kind of set us on our way. Then we had a, a snow game at home and beat Houston. And then we had a game against our, 
rivals the Seahawks and got out to a fast lead and, and blew them out. And then we had three division games to finish the season and, and, uh, and obviously ran the table there. So um, yeah, that would be more, I think, of the, of the comparison at this point. Um, have you thought at all about what life looks like without football? Is that something that creeps in whenever you're not having as much success as maybe you've had in the past? Because every, the conversation on the internet about you is, when's he gonna? How long is he gonna keep playing for? Is he gonna stop? Is he gonna remain invested? Because to be honest, we haven't had this type of struggle out of you or teams that you're on for some time. So I think it's a valid question. Is that something you even let creep into your mind, or is that that can't happen in the middle of a season for you? Well, look, I mean, I'm a human. Of course, you think about life after football, and it's not, you know, it's not a like a you turn it on at some points and turn it off. I mean, I think you always, um, you know, when you have interests outside of the game, there's always things that uh, that come up that you spend time doing, you know, in some of your free time that uh, that you're going to do more when you're done playing. So of course, of course, there's that thought. But when you're when you're in it and you're creatures of habit, obviously the focus is on the season. The focus is on the preparation, and that doesn't change. But it doesn't also change that you can't have interest outside of the game that that uh, you take your mind to from time to time. And, and I look forward to those things, but um, those, those are not the front of my mind. Those are, those are near the back. But, uh, but to sit here and say, oh, no, it's all ball all the time and blah, 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 bullshit. Like, I mean, I don't know. That's not the way I am. Like, like there's, there's life after football, and there's life outside of football, even during the season, that I think it's important to, to keep that balance. And, yeah, you're gung-ho. You're all in. You're, you know, all about finding ways to – to tweak little things to improve and to, and to be more efficient. But you're also a person, you have a life and, and, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been an awesome run. I mean, I'm, I'm really proud of uh, what I've accomplished. I don't, you know, I'm not like looking forward to the end and, and you know, life after football is going to be a tough transition as for every player that finishes up. And I don't know when that's going to be, you know, I don't know if it's going to be after the season or after three more seasons or whatnot, but um, there'll be decisions that we'll have, uh, Later down the road, right now it's you know it's about this week, about this show, and about uh, Sunday night football and Crosby family Thanksgiving. But I, yeah. that was a great answer, and I <laughs> I appreciate you giving it to us. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, would you be say after football? Would you be more likely to become an NFL coach or work in the media? Say like sign a ten year, five hundred million dollar deal with a, <laughs> a network like Tom Brady to call games? Yeah. Is there another option? Politics. Nope. Uh, yeah, politics. GM. You'd be great at that. Hippie, just be a hippie down there. Uh, GM, shaman, shaman. 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 There it is. That's the word I was looking for. Shaman. Yeah, maybe a sherpa. Uh, that's the, the ayahuasca folks. No, no, like a sherpa, like you uh, help. Uh, you're like the guides for uh, for mountain climbers. Like, you no, know, they do all the work. They do all the work for the mountain climbers. Oh, they do all the work. Well, they set it up. You still got to climb. I, I mean, yeah. I've heard. I've heard terrible stories. Now, the Sherpas are dogs because they're doing a lot of different work, but I believe the climbers are as well. I don't know if that's something for me. Do you see in the future you staying in the football world or venturing out? Definitely not coaching, I can tell you that. I mean, I have no interest in being at the facility all day and guarding my desk. I just like to. <laughs> we had a full convo about this, about the Jeff Saturday hiring. Literally start to show 45 minutes we did because AQ, he went and coached for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a year or whatever. After 12 years in the NFL, setting his family up, having a family in his mid thirties, he goes back to coaching and it was just, Hey, need you to drop cards. Go ahead and grab this coffee. Need you to fix the fucking printer. Need you to do all this. Thing. He's an adult who has a very successful NFL career under his belt, and he's doing all that. And it's like nobody wants to get into coaching because of it. So the Jeff Saturday hiring could, I think, change the way that whole goes for former players if some former players want to get back into it. But nonetheless, that's how all of us feel, I think, Aaron. All of us fucking can't do that. No way. Yeah, and kudos to AQ because uh... – you know, it sounds like he went in and, and, and did what most coaches do and start at the bottom, you know, doing the doing the tough work. And the baby uh, AQ. Yeah, baby, baby AQ. AQ. I, yeah. He paid nothing I, for it, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, baby AQ. Yeah. I don't know that this is the, the you know, future standard, having uh, somebody who's kind of out of football, even as a consultant, step in and be a head coach. I'm not sure if there's going to be more and more people in that role, but that does has zero interest for me. I mean, management side would be the only thing that would slightly um, peak an in interest, but it's a very tiny, tiny interest. Darius, your question for Aaron Rodgers. Hey, man, a young kid, Christian Watson. Obviously, he, he's turned it up these last couple of weeks. You got Randall Cobb back out there, you know, some silver lining from uh, last week. 
Where you at with the uh, receiver room going forward? Well, I love having Randall back. Obviously, he changes what we can do. And, you know, it's unfortunate we had to put him on IR. Uh, yep. But uh, he stepped right in and let us in receiving. Um, I'm not surprised. There might be some people who are surprised. But I see how hard he works. And he just has an innate feel for the game, uh, being able to understand when to get open, what the timing is. And he makes plays every time he's out there. I mean, it just uh, there's a precision with everything that he does. And you just – you can't put a value on that, yeah. you know, like a, a specific dollar value or leadership value or just that innate football IQ and then the precision – and the basis of the foundation of precision is details. And that's what we've been lacking at times, never with 18. You know, just never been an issue for him. He just, everything is is planned. Uh, and then he leaves room for reactions and catches the ball well with his hands, obviously. And he always finds a way to get open on time. So I love having him back. With Christian, you know, it's been, been really fun. Um, and it is crazy in this business and, you know, DB, you played a long time, and I'm sure you can relate to this. Sometimes, it just, and maybe for yourself too, it just takes one play. And one play just changes your whole mindset and direction of your career. It could be young career. It could be older career. Yep. It could be in the middle. But for him, I feel like the over-the-shoulder touchdown catch that he had changed, like, just took this huge anxiety monkey gorilla off of his back. And after that happened, and in the backflip, He's been a different player. He really has. And it's not just in the games where you've seen, obviously, you know, he had two touchdowns and, and again, uh, you know, making big plays for us. But in practice, I mean, I feel like there's been tweaks, tiny tweaks in the in the practice habits. I would venture to say, honestly, I think a lot of it's subconscious. I, I don't think, it, you know, even that it's all like a conscious thing where he's like, okay, now I made a play. Now I'm going to practice a little bit different. Now I'm going to do this a little bit different. I just think it – it's literally this anxiety uh, gorilla that was on his back got taken off, and now he's just able to kind of take a deep breath and and be be a lot freer. Um, now there's still things that he's going to learn, uh, releases and 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 uh, route running stuff that, uh, that that he'll continue to get better at. But the confidence piece and catching the ball uh, that's been what did you really, say? Really fun. What did you say about him? You said, well, I haven't seen a lot of guys that look like him running around the field for Green Bay or something like that. At the beginning of the season, whenever you, when I asked you about him or we asked you about him, you are like, you don't see a lot of humans like him around there. What do you think his, you know, his ceiling is? You think he can go on to be, especially now with this reborn uh, swagger and confidence that he's found, do you think? Well, you know, Pat, I don't really want to get into that. I feel like that's, okay. that, that's been some of the anxiety that, that led to Got it. some of the struggles is, you know, we – Wanted to um, anoint, you know, both him and Romeo, who had nice, you know, training camps and preseasons, especially Rome's because Christian was hurt for a lot of it. We wanted to kind of anoint them already, these like rookies who are going to be, you know, whatever the prognostication was. I don't want to do that to him. You know, I really don't. I think the anxiety he's dealt with already is a lot for any player. And the fact that he's gotten in their side of this and had two nice games and five touchdowns in two weeks. You know, I just want to let him be be a young kid. I want to let him enjoy uh, this, you know, kind of entry into uh, feeling the, the stardom that goes along with playing well yeah. and not start to say, oh, you know, this is his ceiling now. You know, now because then we – oh, then we got to expect him to be what? Uh, you know, we got to expect him to be Julio Jones now as a, as a young player, expect him to be Calvin Johnson. No, let's just let him be him. And and let him enjoy this uh, this run that he's he's put together the last two weeks, and and let him come along at uh, whatever pace is uh, is right for his story. Okay, sweet. He could be great though. We're saying yeah, he guy could be fucking <laughs> guy could be fucking great though. Let's. I like that. I like to hear that. That sounds like that's the case. AQ, your question for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Aaron. I always study the hell out of the run game, and I have most of the time over your career. And I always thought you guys were one of the better sub-run game, if not best sub-run game teams in the league over your time. I saw a sequence at the beginning of the third quarter. You had both backs in the backfield, and you kind of had like a whole little sequence of package plays where you faked one, ran the toss out of it, another one you handed off, another one you run the play action. I feel like that's a big key to moving forward, having both those backs on the field. Is that something you have a big uh, hand in, or is that, you know, Coach, Coach LaFleur? 
Well, Stenovich, actually, the, uh, the uh, offense coordinator for us, uh, who was line coach uh, for a few years before getting elevated, uh, does a lot of the run game, I believe. Um, and I love the little intricacies that we've we've kind of put into it. I thought last week we had a couple really cool things. You know, we've been so, doing so much uh, motion out of that, the back, one of the backs to the two receiver side, and then running in inside or outside zone with some sort of run, uh, you know, RPO. And then this last week we started off and ran Dylan behind and then flipped it same side to Jones, which I thought was a really nice adjustment for us. And we also ran a little pseudo option, even though they didn't really give me the, uh, the green light to, you know, kind of pull that and get down the field before a pitch. But I thought that was a good wrinkle as well. Um, but I, I like the wrinkles we've done in, in our 21 personnel with both those backs in the field and, you know, we got to get our best guys in the field, and they consistently show up as being playmakers for us. 33, obviously, is a, is a crazy difference maker. We can take it to the house every run. And 28 has been very consistent for us as well. So, you know, we just uh, – we're going to always have wrinkles like that. I'm not sure how much uh, this week, but there's always stuff in the plan. Whether or not we get to it is another story. If you were able to get to a offense coordinator position in which you didn't have to guard your desk and you could just show up on Sunday, how much of the run game would you have involved in your game plan? Well, I know the run game inside and out. I mean, that's how I was trained. Uh, was was front first. Yeah, don't our, you read the D line first, right? That's what, you read the D line first. That's your first read, right? Yeah, yeah, front first. When we were at our best in the run game, uh, Mike simplified it, and we went to a lot of uh, Alex Van Pelt, uh, Buff, old Buffalo Bills K gun offense stuff, where it was strictly based on technique. So we had certain runs to a six technique, certain runs to a nine technique, strong side, certain runs to a, a, a shade uh, or a three technique and, and specific runs for jam fronts. And it was all predicated, all the uh, adjustments on that front, which was great for me because that's how West Coast quarterbacks were trained is front back. You know, the front tells you the possibilities of, of the pressures and the possibilities of the coverages. And, and so, I, you know, I, I know the run game and I know all the calls of the run so I can help out if they need me to make uh, an adjustment like that. Uh, this hasn't kind of been the way in this offense. This offense is very kind of turn your brain off quarterback and, and just like kind of Kunu teaching, uh, teaching surfing lessons, like do less sometimes. <laughs> but for me, I just can't play that way. So I've always wanted to know, like, give me all the calls. What's the single call, the double call, the triple call, the backside, uh, you know, doubles, the backside B blocks, all those different things. I want to know all the calls so I can – in a jam, get those guys making sure they're going to the right guy and do some of the cheater steps in the system. So run game for me has always been – I really enjoy it because it's uh, it's about angles, and I was pretty good in geometry. Oh, yeah. Hey, sounds like you're pretty good at the football as well, the way you broke that down. And I saw AQ over there going 6 to midnight listening to you <laughs> describe <laughs> the K-gun back there in Buffalo or whatever. It's a fascinating thing because this year in the NFL, the run game is actually up across the board as opposed to the pass game. Even the rules are changing for the pass game to be better. It be better. It seems like the teams that run the ball the best right now are the teams that are going to end up making it with the way the offense is going in 2022. It's been sophisticated. Well, I mean, I'm, I mean look, I, I'm, I did kind of say that though, right? Because this game goes in circles, right? And the yes. defense, the defense will uh, will definitely lead in in the direction that offenses will react right so when the defense goes to more quarter quarter half coverage shell coverages to shell you got to run the football so i'm not surprised at all and and that's the way the league has gone as the rams obviously had a bunch of success uh running those defenses that are predicated on uh umbrella in the back end and and stopping the run and the and getting to the quarterback with four up front and not bringing a lot of pressure uh, makes teams have to run the football. Then you're also seeing some dynamic offenses, obviously with uh, with uh, quarterback runs like the team we're playing this week uh, get involved. And obviously what Chicago's doing down there with Fields, and you know okay. no brainer with Lamar in, in Baltimore for so long. Uh, that's you know gonna that's gonna be the next jump for the offense, and the defense will have to adjust. And you'll probably see more one high coverages, uh, you know, in the next uh, you know, I don't know three, four, five years. Wait until you see. Jason Kelsey and Jalen Hurts do the sneak. 
I, wa- I got to watch it live a lot this week against the Colts because we're on the field down there. Jason Kelsey looks like he's hovering above the ground somehow, and it's never a doubt. Like in Jalen, obviously he squats like six hundred and whatever. What it is, it seems they could do that. I think every single play, and it was <laughs> yep. unbelievable watching it against us. It was like holy hell. How do they go about doing that? Jalen is awesome. I'm excited for the game to continue to evolve and grow. The cyclical nature of everything, it appears, is going to catch up to football soon with the offense side of the ball. Connor has the last question for you, then we're going to go to the book club. Can't wait to see what you're going to tell us to read this week. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Aaron, on Watson's first touchdown, you kind of caught Tennessee trying to get guys off the field, and it was a 12 men on the field penalty when you threw the touchdown. And later on in the game, you know, one of the guys on the defense might have faked an injury, and Vrabel came out, and you guys had a little interaction. What was that about? And did you guys get to like smoke a cigarette after the game <laughs> together and kind of, you know, let bygones be bygones? Uh, I didn't uh, get a chance to to have any darts with him after the game, Aww. but uh, he came out very concerned for his player, and I just kind of wanted to hear what the conversation was over there. <laughs> I had a couple a couple comments for. From Mike, uh, he didn't really say anything back. Um, but uh, hold, like on, no, hold on, though, hold on, though, hold on. Hey, hey, Aaron, Aaron, they're showing two close-up photos here on the back, and we have to hear what was said. Vrabel, obviously, go to the other one, please. Vrabel, obviously, walking out of there. You just asked him a question. He said something to you. Mm-hmm. Then a zoom in on your face after the answer he gives you. You did not believe the answer. <laughs> yeah, see that you did not believe whatever Vrabel said there. If we're just going off of body language and photos, there was it a sentence back and forth? Was there any real convo on the field, or is that just that he blew you off? That's why you gave him the look that he gave you. He kind of blew me off. Wow. Whoa. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't have done the same thing based on what I said to him. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. I was oh. trying to I was oh. trying to I was trying to goad him to give me a, a reaction, which he you know, he, he stayed above it. But uh but yeah, I you know, said something about him uh, personally and he didn't want to respond. <laughs> Could you imagine Vrabel Thursday night football? Fucking taking a right hand and punching you right in the Whoa. face. Just in the Ohio <laughs> of the Ohio ness <laughs> of him couldn't take over. You question probably his manhood, if I had to guess here, with the way you're kind of laying out this whole situation. He walks by what we got. Oh my Big god. One. Bowling ball. Four to five here. Yeah. Okay, we got the hat up there. D, you guys are favored by whatever. He's just Ohio fuck walking by. You say something, and he actually just turns and punches you right in the face. Boom. Imagine if that, that would be the greatest moment in the history of sports. Uh-huh. Oh, man. You and Braves, good I, friends, I, right? I agree. I happen to agree. Yeah, I like Mike a lot. We, we, uh, we talk a good amount during the season. Um, I mean, not really about football at all, just about well, often how silly this business is and, and some of the – uh, just things that get attention, but I, I, I like Mike a lot. I've known him for years. Age has been there with some of the conversations with the Derby over the years. He's a really funny guy, and uh, I just like his personality and, and the way he is. And obviously, he's a great coach. He's just uh, he always has his guys ready to play. They fly around on defense and they've got to take on his personality. I think. Yeah, he's an incredible coach. We're putting him up in that level of um, when we talk about games or we're trying to make picks. We're like, oh, Belichick's going to do something, though. And we're like, we just assume that Belichick, no matter what the game is set up, Belichick's going to have it figured out. We talk about it with Andy Reid a little bit because of the years and years and years of success that he's had. Now it's starting to get to the point where it's like, Vrabel have the boys for you. Vrabel has one of those things. It's uh, He's awesome to watch. Former player kicking ass in the coaching ranks. Let's continue to do that. Let's continue to have that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the most anticipated moment of the week for all the literacy advocates out there. Because it is something that this show should never be a part of. Making the world smarter and brighter what? and more horizons broadened. Mm-hmm. This show has been what? a part of a ride mm-hmm. that this man started that we are lucky to be a part of. I now own so many books when maybe in the past I owned zero. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the latest installment of the Aaron Rodgers Book Club 2.0. This season was fantastic. It started with the mastery of love. Say, so, hey, listen. Why don't you guys go master love a little bit? Get a doctorate in love. Yeah, and maybe yeah. love yourself a little bit. Then, obviously, George Orwell's 1984. That caused quite a topic of conversation for the time in which it was put out there. The art of contemplation. Why don't we contemplate some stuff in an artful fashion? And then How to Change Your Mind, which is a documentary on Netflix. Then followed by Healing. And then the boy in the mushroom... 
Yep, and the cross. And the cross, yeah, the boy, the sacred mushroom and the cross <laughs> by John M. Allegro. Uh, then 7A was Love Wins by Rob Bell. 7B was the beautiful coloring book of Keanu Reeves in which I colored in every belt that he was wearing black because we know Keanu Reeves only wears black belts in every martial art. Hell yeah! The eighth book of the Aaron Rodgers Book Club 2.0 will be... An oldie but a goodie, Into the Wild by John Krakow. Oh, hell yeah! Oh, yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah, hell yeah dude! Woo! Yes! I just came from the brawl of the wild, bro. Why? Now we're going into the wild. The, Pat, you can watch the movie on this one. Okay. Yeah, Great. you can watch the movie. movie. The, book is, the book is, I mean, Whoa, I, I used to hate when people would say, oh, the book's way better. Way, or way better. Me too. You know? Shut up. But in this case, as good as the movie is, and it's really good, <laughs> I mean, John is, you know, arguably my favorite author. I've talked about his book about Pat Tillman, Where Men Win Glory, back in season one of the book club. Probably my all-time favorite book. Into the Wild um, is a fantastic book about a young kid who goes off into the Alaskan wilderness and, and kind of a hippie and uh, ends up having a, a rough ending. But uh, oh, oh, he <laughs> really, he's dead. Jeez, yeah. dude! Oh, come read the book for it. Dude. Me, like 20 years ago, guys. Let me okay. take the, oh, come enough on. time for a book, dude? That 30. needs to be a 30 to 40 year type situation 30, yeah. for spoilers. Okay, yeah. 40 to 50. What? Jeez. Thank you for that. I, I can't yeah. wait to dive Spoiler. in. The book is better than a movie, dude. The movie's pretty hey, good, Jay. though. Who's in the movie's movie? pretty good. Emil better. Hirsch. Oh, Who? Emil yeah. Hirsch. Great. So good. Yeah. yeah. Eddie Vedder Emil does Hirsch. the soundtrack. Yeah. So good. Emil Hirsch. From Girl Next Door fame. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy. I know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Vince Vaughn's in it a little bit, too. Yeah. Vinny? Vinny? Is this oh, after yeah. Rudy? Is this near Rudy, Vince yeah. Vaughn, or, or Friday no, Night Disco that. Nights? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Around the late Disco Nights one. <laughs> yeah. what? what? When is... More when, like Breakup, Vince Vaughn. When was in... Ooh. Oh, Into the Wild recent? Yeah, I think this came out in like 2006, 2007, maybe. Yeah. Oh. Really? Yeah. How about it? All right, I can't wait to watch. <laughs> read. I can't because the book's better. I'm going to read the hell out of this one. Aaron, can't wait to watch. You can read the book, Pat. It's only... Uh, it's a quick one. Too many. Yeah, it's quick. It's only like 200 pages. So yeah. the movie has to be better then. If the movie's an you hour and a half. The movie's a tight the, hour 45. And the book's only 200 pages. How much more detail could the book go? I understand he's great. He's a great author. I understand. That. I'm going to read this one, though. This one I'm going to read. I, Hell yeah. I don't want to. Get the spark notes. Get, get Connor to give you the spark notes. It'll be good. Hey, read the book, though. Don't watch the movie. Don't be fucking cheating <laughs> no, the book no. club, pal. Never. No, it's an unbelievable book. I All will. right. Has Avatar got a book? Uh, Avatar's coming yeah, out. Yeah, Pope's Pope's yes. It should be. Are we excited? Oh. Are we excited at, uh about Avatar coming The answer out? is yeah. yes. The answer yeah. is yes, Aaron. Did you see the trailer last night? Obviously not. You didn't watch the game. It was a halftime Monday Night Football. They threw to it. And Jacob Sully and the tribe are going underwater. Oh, and they got to learn how to fly new new birds. Boom. Okay. And then inevitably, it's, it appears, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, and I don't think we would do this in real life, although probably. Seems like some asshole Americans come back. Probably. Uh. And then the underwater... Uh, avatars and the bird avatars are going to have to come together to fight against the dumb whites that have come in there. And I can't wait for it. I cannot wait for what James Cameron put together. Are you pumped for it as well? I am I'm very pumped for it. I can't believe we, we've had to wait 15 years for it, but I'm excited. The movie's going to be only four hours long. James Cameron said, you don't like it? Tough. It's the fucking story. <laughs> Woo! Okay, watch it in eight different half-hour docu-series. Is that what you need to do? I guess it's a long one. It's going to be deep detail. It's underwater, and I can't wait to see what Sully does with the team. Me oh. too. I can't wait to see what Sully. It's been so many years. They probably have a kid to Avatar now as a teenager. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got a like couple. It. And I've seen you in the water. You're a big water guy. You're a big water guy. I was, I was, I was confused when I saw you in Tahoe. I hadn't seen this in a while, but you go into the water with your shirt on. No, yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> There's no reason to do that right now. There's no reason to do that. I appreciate you. I froze my dick off, okay, in that lake. We all saw it. Then I go into that hot tub. We all saw it. Interesting way to wake up. Ryan Hawk, host of the Learning from the Leadership podcast, who has 500 episodes smacking the shit out of Tahoe. That's the audio. It wakes me up. Mm -hmm. Then there's conversation happening at the hot tub. Can't get in the hot tub, though, if you don't get into Lake Tahoe. Got to go into Lake Tahoe. So cold. So cold. So cold. And it was beautiful out there. Fantastic morning. And don't put that on me. Okay? Don't put that on me. I experienced cold just like everybody else. My nips are out just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Aaron.
that's debatable, but we'll let you have your moment. Tahoe was a good time, dude. Yeah. What a fucking weekend that was. That was unbelievable. That was a good time. It was wild. Maybe, maybe we'll run it back. Let's see. Maybe. I think I'll be in Hungary getting tattoos or something. All right. Oh, yeah. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah.